Hello, my name is Jan Ketil Röd and I am a professor in Geographical Information Science and System at the Department of Geography at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. This video is the first video about map projections and coordinate system and in this video I will talk about geographical coordinates. Most of the content is from the Norwegian textbook GIS Tools to Understand the World. The content of this video I will be talking about the shape of the Earth and the main characteristics uh, that I will emphasize is that it is double curved. Further, I will present the main types of Earth models, that is the sphere, ellipsoid and geoid, and I will talk most about the ellipsoid. Uh, the ellipsoid and geoid are both essential concepts and essential to answer the questions where do the maps X, Y and Z coordinates come from? And finally, I will present what you need to know about geographical coordinate systems and the difference between the format degrees, minute and second and decimal degrees. Now we say that the Earth is double curved. What that means is that it curves in two directions that is perpendicular to each other, illustrated with two green arrows in the upper right illustration. On the other hand, a cone or a cylinder, they are also both three-dimensional forms, but they can be unfolded. Because a cone and a cylinder, they are both single curved. And this is thus the main issue with map projection. Double curved means that the shape of the Earth cannot be unfolded without introducing errors. And that is a fact that is often exemplified with the act of peeling an orange. You cannot get the peel to be flat and squared. The peel will be split, full of cracks. However, for a small part of the orange peel, the errors will be small and neglectable. And for the Earth, I usually say that this small area means within a UTM zone. I will talk more about that in the third lecture. A little bit more about the shape of the Earth. A very common perception is that the Earth is like a sphere. It is, however, more precise to say that the shape is like an ellipsoid because the Earth is a little bit flattened. An ellipsoid is characterized with its semi-major axis or the equatorial radius, denoted A, and its semi-minor axis, or the polar radius, denoted B. And flattening means that the polar radius is slightly shorter than the equatorial radius. For a very well-known and often used ellipsoid called WGS84, the difference between the semi-major and the semi-minor axis is a little bit more than 21 km. So this flattening is then given by the relationship A minus B divided by A and since this becomes a very little number it is often denoted as the inverse. And you may notice in QGIS and other software some information about these semi-major axis and the semi-minor axis as well as the flattening. And global data very often comes with WGS84 as a coordinate reference system. And in QGIS you can know this by looking at the information in the lower right corner. Then it might say EPSG4326 and this is just a code for the coordinate reference system WGS84. And the lower right corner is also one of the entries to the project properties. Click on this and you can open project properties and this dialog appears. And here you may change the way the layers are displayed. This will not change the stored coordinate. This will still be in WGS4, but you may display them according to a different coordinate. 
reference system. Having introduced WGS84, since we are in Europe and Norway, I should also introduce what I call the little sister of WGS84, namely the European Terrestrial Reference System from 1989, short ETRS 89. Another name is the EUREF 89. The two are very similar, but in Norway and the rest of Europe, we are using ETRS 89. And although the difference is very small, an advice is still that you should use the same coordinate reference system for all of the layers which you are using. So if you have some global data which you are combining with some regional or local data, you should make sure to transform the layer so it is based on the ETRS-89. So as I mentioned, the ETRS-89 is also called EUREF-89. And if you use paper maps, you may see this reference somewhere below under the map. And this was introduced in Norway in 1997 as the official geodetic reference system. Then replacing what was called the European Datum or ED50. And now we are coming into a concept called Datum. And this is really just about positioning the ellipsoid related to the Earth center. That is the core element of the concept Datum. Previously, in Norway and much of Europe, we called then what was called the European Datum from 1950 because that gave a good fit between the Earth model, the ellipsoid, and the Earth surface. But uh, this ellipsoid did not fit well in North America, so they had their own local datum, such as the North American datum from 1927, NAD 27. However, with the development of global navigation satellite systems, such as GPS, it was a need for a global datum, and the W GS84 developed and soon after the European version of this one. And instead of a global datum, a term often used is geodetic reference frame or geodetic reference system. Although the Earth is best represented by an ellipsoid or a spheroid, that's the same thing, it is sometimes treated as a sphere to make mathematical calculation easier. This, I must say, was more relevant before than today. But the assumption that the Earth is a sphere is possible for small scale maps. That is, maps having a scale smaller than 1 to 5 million. At this scale, the difference between a sphere and a spheroid is not detectable on a map. However, to maintain accuracy for large scale maps, that is, maps that have a scale larger than 1 to 1 million, a spheroid or an ellipsoid is needed to represent the shape of the Earth accurately. In your daily use of GIS, it's seldom that you need to care about these parameters for the ellipsoid being used for the coordinate reference system, but uh, QGIS and other GIS need this information in order to do accurate measurements. And you often then see these parameters, for instance here, in the project properties and the general for the measurement, because this is then basis for accurate measurements. So here, for instance, using the parameters for the semi-major and semi-minor using the World Geodetic System from 1984. The sphere or the ellipsoid, these are central ingredients in what is often referred to as the horizontal datum, where we got the x and y coordinates from. Whereas the geoid is a central ingredient in what is often referred to as the vertical datum, where we get the set coordinates or the height. So this answer the question where do the maps x, y and z come from? The x and the y comes from the ellipsoid, whereas the set, the height, come from the geoid. But what is a geoid? 
A geoid is a theoretical surface where the level of the world's ocean is extended below the continent. And that is why we say height above sea surface. It relates to the geoid. Height is not measured related to the ellipsoid. Geographical coordinates is the coordinate system used for the sphere or the ellipsoid. Some essential concepts is the equator and the prime meridian. This defines the location of the origin. So latitude, the coordinates which gives the northern or southern position, and the longitude which gives the eastern or western position, all relates then to the origins. So this it's north of equator or south of equator, is this east or west of the prime meridian. As a prime meridian, we use the Greenwich Meridian. This was in 1884 agreed upon internationally to be the zero meridian or the prime meridian. Before 1884, there were several alternative prime meridian, one going through Madrid, another one going through Paris, but in 1884, the international community agreed to use the Greenwich Meridian as the prime meridian. Two other essential concepts is the parallels or lines of latitude. These are called parallels since they're parallel to equator. And we have meridians, lines going north, south, from one pole to another. And Greenwich is just one of several possible meridians. The geographical coordinates are given by degrees, that's up to 90 degrees north or 90 degrees south, and it's up to 180 degrees east or 180 degrees west. And in each degrees there are 60 minutes, and it, in each minute there are 60 seconds. And this is called degrees minute second or DMS. In QGIS and other GIS, you can set up which format you want geographical coordinates to be displayed. And you see it about in the middle down on the QGIS screen. And as you move the cursor in your, the map, these coordinates will update. And I think this is the location approximately where the cursor will be situated when it's above Trondheim. In QGIS and other GIS, typically decimal degrees is the default format for geographical coordinates. Because counting up to 60 instead of counting up to 10 and 100 is not appropriate for digital environments. So then how to convert from degrees minute second to decimal degrees? That is something the computer most often do for you, but it may also be needed if you need to register points from a non-digital source. We have an example here of 37 degrees, 36 minutes and 30 seconds. There's in the degree minute second format. And to get this into decimal degrees, you need to divide each value by the number of minutes or seconds in a degree. And uh, we have here 36 minutes, so we need to divide 36 by 60, which is 0.6. And we have 30 seconds, which needs to be then divided by 3600, because we have 3600 seconds in a degree, 60 by 60. And then you just simply add up the degrees to get the answer. So we have 37 degrees, the 36 minutes, that is the 0.6 degrees, and we have the 00833 degrees from the seconds. So this comes to this numbers of decimal degrees. And this is the generic formula. First take the degrees, then the minutes, and the second. In QGIS this could be altered in the project properties, entry of the general tab and here in the coordinate and bearing display click on customize and you can set this to either decimal degrees 
or degrees, minutes, seconds, as you prefer. And this is how it may look then differently in QGIS. Now we're coming to an end for this video lecture. Some key concepts is that there is a datum or geodetic reference system, which is the basis or the recipe for all coordinates, whether it is on the spheroid or at the plane flat map. So this is really then just about how to positioning the ellipsoid related to the Earth center. Then we've been through geographical coordinates, which gives them the position on the spheroid. But very often in GIS, we are using a plan map using Cartesian coordinates. So to get there, we need to go through a map projection. Then both map projection and characteristics of a Cartesian coordinate system will be covered in two different videos. So you should also watch these.